speaker for the day. So I would advise that if you are not well seated, if you could adjust your chair so you don't twink your neck. Yes. So, yeah. Our main speaker for today is a justice of the High Court. He's a member of the Judicial Council of Ghana. He worships with Church of Pentecost PIWC, that's the French Assembly Kokomnele, and he is married to Mrs. Esther Abuajitando with three wonderful children. Ladies and gentlemen, with a mighty round of applause, shall we receive His Lordship Justice Abuajitando? Love. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you are the author of our life and our being. We live because you are ready to be so. We want to commit ourselves into your care, Heavenly Father. Touch our hearts as you are designed for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Like one of my colleagues rightly said, the story and the history and the testimony that we have has been long throughout our life. But we do our best to summarize it so that we can share what God Himself has been able to do. And as I also added, He is the altar of our life. Everything that happens in our life is uttered by God Himself. My name, as you mentioned, Abuaji Tandok, from a village somewhere in the Ashanti region. Spent my life in Accra. But we took that thank God I'm able to speak some Ghana. <laughs> but it's very interesting also, doing so, I learned several other languages. So I can speak Gary, I can speak Hausa, and I can speak French. As I tell you the story, you will get to understand. Fortunately or unfortunately, my birth was not as some of you were lucky to have. But I've always said that the story that others will narrate is sometimes not too much different from the story that we have. Especially when we are, we are placed together at the same day. Because of me, my mother was unable to pursue her education. Because she was also impregnated by my father at the time when she was not married to my father. So at that point of that pregnancy, my mother told me was to abort or not to abort. And so a lot of advice came from friends. Because the father was a very strict father. So the best to them was to avoid me. But it's very interesting also in life. Where you acknowledge that the struggle and the challenges that we go through, you know, did not begin yesterday. But even if some of us were fatals in the womb of our parents, we were struggling with the people who were already living. They were prepared not to make us come out as living beings. So even as fetals, they started and we started the battle there. Yeah. But you see, God has said that He knows us even before we were conceived in our mother's womb. How practical and real the Bible of God is. So thank God. I was born for it. So my mother would have to suspend her education and to cater for me. Very difficult scenario. At a three, that's why you can see this mark, is the here. I fell into one of the deepest gutter in Kumasi. And everybody came around thinking that I was dead. At the time we were praying like children. And, and children, you know, they can't be excited. 
He took somebody who rushed. Not because he, had saw, me, he saw me in, in the garden, but because the children were around very, very, a very dangerous portion of, of, of the garden to drive them away. Not to I was also there dying. Thank God I survived. We don't still have the man. I followed my mother to church. So growing up, a member of the Church of Pentecost. But I had no understanding how one can become a born again. I had no idea. One day, the Sunday school teacher himself came forth and he was asked to raise his hand to accept Jesus Christ. He was prepared so to do. Then I said to him, ah, but this is our Sunday school teacher. How can he himself is going to raise his hand to accept Jesus Christ? What is that? We thought that the elders, the pastors, they are next to God. And the Sunday school teacher is not too far from God. But how can he not coming to accept Jesus Christ? Then I got the understanding that the issues of Christianity and accepting Christ and being saved is a personal endeavor. It doesn't depend on your mother or father having accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. You will have to do that yourself. So I came to that understanding. And for that reason, I was also prepared and accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And I started my education. Going to school was became very difficult. My, my father had traveled. There was no communication with him. At the time, of course, communication was also difficult. And my mother was raising us alone. Life has become difficult. Going to school. So when I got to secondary school, I attended a work State College in Kibi. So vacations are to support my education by doing a very wonderful job that I call one of the best jobs that I've enjoyed in life. It's working as a sushi boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that to support my education on vacations. And I've been telling people that the sushi of today. They, 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 are, they make the, the work more easier than we had it. And with a lot of luxury. Because we don't have time, as I've already been saying. And every five minutes you have to walk and you have to signal that the switch boy is what? <laughs> it's around. And how do you do that? Yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir, yes. So every five minutes, yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir, yes, 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 It means that all the tall shoes that you have, we are capable of bending them to get you going. But today, they just make co, 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 co. I said, no, but this is too simple. <laughs> so they can, it's an advancement, of course, so that they can keep, keep their heart, their voice. We are losing them every day. <laughs> So that is how I managed to support my mom and my education. Luckily, I had a scholarship, government scholarship at the time, and so I managed to complete secondary school. But I can tell you that there were times that on vacations I'm unable to get money to pay transfer from Kibi to Accra. There was one friend who would tell me about what is now in the UK. They are still very good friends. Who will tell me about this time? Has it, has it ever been the case that somebody did not have money and then school has vacated? And because he has no money to go, he stayed on, on campus or in school until everybody else came. Has it ever happened? I said, oh, no, it has never happened. I've never heard about that. And so then he will go. That was a, a word of faith that I learned from my good friend. So, he managed to get me some money from, from where I don't know. I got to the roadside. I got uh, this car that we call Coco car. You know the Coco car? This truck. Big trucks. 
I jumped on board. I go to American Junction. I was prepared to be. The driver said, oh, Master, are you white? Go for your small boy. I said, oh, thank God. It was enough to start my shoeshine business. Yeah. <laughs> for the tail. And that business was not difficult. I cannot buy polish, you know, the, the full one. So I go for cotton. And I get to be. I don't know how, how they call it now. That that uh, should be depending on the color of your shoe. So I guess should be, and I I get some uh, uh, quarter polish, and then the one we use for this Ahinema thing, and then I get this uh, something I can use to sew the the, the the shoes, and I am ready to go. And so that's how I did and moved. I completed secondary school. I had always thought that the way I've been suffering. It would be good for me to travel abroad. Maybe over there I can make some good money. So that I will not suffer and my brothers and my mother will not suffer. I thought that was the solution. So I left Ghana. I went to Cote d'Ivoire. And in Cote d'Ivoire I got a very wonderful job. I'm, I'm going to do very wonderful jobs. So I got a job as a watchman. You see? <laughs> but to me, they were very wonderful. So I work as a watchman at the US Embassy in Cote d'Ivoire. And then they decided to train their watchmen to become security guards. So you see, I graduated from watchman to security guard. So I went as such. Then at the gate, I went as a gate, at the gate, gate one, I came to the reception. Then because something wonderful happened, because I had, I had done French in secondary school. So learning French and speaking French became easier for me because I had the basis. And so I went to the reception where I could have the opportunity to talk to people. And then I improved my, my French. Then one day, before even then, I was sent to somebody's residence. The American lady came and said, ah, is that the, the security that they brought to my, to my residence today? This way, the, the chief man is not afraid of this man. So she called them, they came to pull me from their residence. When they pulled me from their residence, if I, it's one of the moments that I felt so bad as a human being. That my 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 size, my 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 heart had gone a disadvantage, and nobody would want to go me in his house as I watch my oh god have mercy. <laughs> but American American my ringers were also upset because they believe in uh, they don't like this act of discrimination and all that. So they brought me to the reception. And was it going as a prank or was? They took me to the radio room. As a radio room, it's the voice you hear. You see my face and you see my form. So at least I can survive. <coughs> so I was talking and, and talking. So when a new Americans arrive, then I'll give them security briefing on the air. They'll be listening to me. They got excited about me. One day they said, no, they wanted to see the gentleman in that radio room. So I was pulled from the radio room to address them just as I'm doing today. I said, ah, this man? No, but he's knowledgeable, he's nice, he's this, he speaks well. No, I think we need him to, to teach the Americans when they arrive and also all our security guards. So I was pulled from the radio room to the, to, as the training officer. The training officer came, the director of operations. From then, I was still harboring the desire to travel abroad. I went to the it's really amazing for American uh, for uh, the Israeli visa. But before then, I had gone to Israel. I was deported. <laughs> so I came down. The second time, when I go to Ben Gurion Airport, they pulled me out. Unfortunately for me, I was the only black man in the streets there that I boarded at the, 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 at the time. They pulled me out. And the others were all going. And I knew because you see, I had the experience. The experience is good sometimes. <laughs> I knew they were going to be me. They took my, my luggage, 
and they will carry me along. Then I stop. I say, what are you people doing? Is it because of my color that you have allowed everybody to line up and you have pulled me outside? Do you do that to the others? Do you know what I do? Your embassy in Cote d'Ivoire comes for our services and I protect your people there. When I have come to your country, is that what you are doing to me? One of them say, please, cool down. Then, I think they had a change of mind. They now sent me out, got me a taxi to the hotel. I said, ah, we are gone. <laughs> There's something interesting in Israel. You know, in Israel, yes. Yes means Ken. You know, Ken. You hear everybody say Ken, 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 Ken. Ah, this Ken might be a very popular gentleman. <laughs> this is the guy you know that Ken is yes. <laughs> so I took my, my taxi out to the hotel. Then I went to the Elat, the Red Sea resort where I got a job. Over there, I got a wonderful job. So I got a job and as a steward, washing the dishes and place, hiding myself and washing the dishes. And also went through it. One day I met one of my senior in secondary school. The last time I heard of him, I think he was a Lieutenant Colonel, a woman did. I don't know his rank now. He said, ah, I was alone. Now, Utipa, now we have a turn, now we have a whole chance in him. And I won't go to school. He changed my mind. But I knew God was talking to him. So I went to my pastor. I said, Pastor, the things I'm hearing, I think I want to go back to Ghana. And I want to restart and kickstart my education. Then the pastor called some few other people to advise him because I may follow a drawing me back to Ghana. <laughs> my brother, my sister, it comes a time that you have to trust God and not others. Even your pastor sometimes can discourage you. Even when God is touching your heart to take steps that he himself as God has destined you to follow. So I did not take the advice of my, my pastor. So I came. Of course, when I came back to Ghana, I also realized that my father should be a papa. <laughs> because things were very, very difficult. Then I went to the, I managed, I applied to the university, then I went to the University of Cape Coast, where I did biological science. Not law, but biological science. At the University of Cape Coast, something very interesting happened. I decided to contest as the SRC president. So I assembled about four brothers to help me in prayers. So a few days later, they came to tell me about it all. And I think, can you hear me? And the, the revelation that we had from God, we had lost the election. <laughs> How would you feel when they tell me this? <laughs> I said, ah, and these are very strong men that I believe. These are strong men, Christians, and men of God that will be praying. When they tell me something, you have to take it serious. But I saw this one. I sat down and I said, oh God, oh God. I went to Israel first. I was reported. I went second. We touched my heart. I've come. And I've come to, I want to condemn this, this one too. They are telling me that my way. Ah! So I thought about it. I said, no, the time has not come yet. The SRC lessons has not been held. So let me call them back. I said, my friends, what you are saying is true. I'm not disputing what you are saying. If the lessons were to be held today, and they mention how, how I want to use four votes. <laughs> if the lessons were held today, I was going to lose my wife four votes. So what you said was true. But see, we still have some days ahead of us. So let's work and pray very hard. And God will make a way. And indeed, God made a way. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the election, I had about 85% of the votes. Wow. And I won in all the halls and the University of Texas. <laughs> in 
immediately power was handed over to me as the president of the SIC. Twelve of the students of the University of Kinkos were eradicated, including at the time the president of Luz, who is now playing a very key role in Bambi, I won't mention his name. <laughs> so we had to mobilize all the students in Ghana to go on nationwide Aluta. Today, all those of us who went to plan that Aluta, they are playing very key in Bambi on both sides of the island. Today, I won't mention their name too. But they all know me. So we managed, we were spoken to, and we were able to resolve all the problems. They restored all of them, and the, those who were completing the university, they gave their certificates to them, and the matter was resolved. <coughs> then I decided to go to the law school because there was a problem that I was able to resolve between then UDS, the SRC presidency, and Legon. And then the SRC president had a problem. And his senior brother, Josh Sapon, who is now the executive secretary of the National Media Commission, he was a former news secretary. So we came for that Congress for us to resolve that problem. So I stepped in and said that we are young people. Don't let us ruin our career. Let us forget some of the things that happened to us and let's move on. So thank God we were able to resolve that problem. He said, No. Joseph Sapon said, No. I'm going to tell you be a better lawyer than. Than the science that you are pursuing. Ah, at this point, where is it coming from? <laughs> because Lebon had brought most of the law students to come and help them resolve the problem. They were unable to do that. And the, the science student doing biology has been called upon to resolve the problem. Because at the time, the new conference was being held at the University of Cape Coast, and being the SRC president, you are the student, the chairman of the student committee, like the transition period of the end of one's mandate and then the handing over of the new mandate. So because I was able to resolve that problem, he said, no, you'll be a very good lawyer. I said, okay, I don't even know how a science student can become a lawyer. I've never heard of it. So I did English at the University of Ghana. I'm also studying law. So I got to law school because of George Sapon. So I completed the law school. Before I completed the law school, I got a job with the UN. United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. So I was torn between continuing the law program and get maintaining my UN job. There's always a I want to move you on the check, no, I take you strong, this is you may for that to change the code. <laughs> but this time around, what was critical was the work I did in Israel. In Israel, I was work, working for 16, 16 hours. Long time, that's why we call it. I start to work at 7 and I close at 12 p.m. So coming to Ghana and working for 8 hours and going to school for 8 hours was not too much of a problem. Especially at the time too, when you go to the place of game because I was telling people, if you want to go to uh, hell, you, may, you can prosper a little. Because of the difficulties that we have standing at the place of game goes, honestly. So I I opted to do the two. But something also significant happened. You know what happened? When I was I was invited for the interview. One of the, the, the panel members who was also the admin of something, not though he had been working in Cote d'Ivoire, said that on your CV, you said you did this job in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire. When you came, who did you contact for that job to be done? Apparently, the same UN office now in Ghana, was in Cote d'Ivoire, solicited our, our, our head to put in place their security measures. So I was assigned that job, not knowing she was there. So don't lie on your CV. Zone. <laughs> so I she, then I mentioned the name of the, the Fuka Point person. He said, ah, okay, Dumbia is now in, in Mali. I said, oh, thank God, now I'm at home. And that's how I got the UN job. 
So I went to the UN for, for almost five years. The last point was when I was in Kenya during the crisis with Raila, Raila Odinga and Kibaki. You know, the bilateral uh, problem that they had. So we were the first UN staff to be dispatched there because of the internally displaced persons. When I came back from Kenya, I said, enough of the UN. Enough of the UN. The things that I saw, never pray that there should be any violence of any sort in this country. The dead bodies that I saw in my eyes, I was seriously traumatized. So when I came back, I decided to go to the bench as a magistrate. As a magistrate, so let me first try. Before then, I had spent 10 years at the period between secondary school and the university. I stayed home for 10 good years. How long did you stay at home after secondary school? Straight, 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 straight. So you are blessed. So you can't complain. But some of us, we stayed for 10 years before we had the opportunity to go to the university. So when that happened, when I joined the bench as a magistrate, that's why I met this is Manfusan. The Manfusan said one of the senior members of the full gospel invited me. And I said to us, ah, and he, I, I, I did the phone bell for you, so I went to Because all along, even before I came to law, I had always thought that as for those people, they don't even know God, they don't even fear God. But he brought me to focus and a program like this. I forgot that um, uh, Reverend Akon was the, the person who spoke like I'm doing. Then he narrated his story. Then I sat and said, hey, focus is a community of our brevet. <laughs> because if your brother or sister is to tell you, yeah, the one beside you is to tell you the things that he or she has gone through in life. You say that as for you also, yeah, you have to bury it somewhere. You see, he was selling Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. I said, then I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to join this community of one. I'm, I'm there for. But these are there for are different are there for. They are there for with, and very happy. It is not for nothing that we are the happiest people on earth. Because you see, we go through all these difficulties. We go through all these challenges. But there's only one thing that holds us. The love that we have for each other and the belief and trust that we have in Jesus Christ. So I drank. Merely I drank. I was, I was also denied visa to, to go to the UK after, after the university. I had the previously also been denied a visa to go to America. I was there one day when the US embassy themselves would not take me home. I was sitting there somewhere and I had a call. I don't know whether they had in, uh, in touch with the, see, the church assist there. So I was just talking. There was some leadership, international leadership volunteer program, IBLP, that's how they call it. So go and give your CV to the American embassy. So I went and I gave it to a certain woman. She said, bring your passport. I sent my passport. So okay, uh, fill this form. I filled it, I gave it to them. And I got their visa. It's so, okay, take this money. When you go, they'll meet you at the airport. If they don't meet you, take a taxi and go to the hotel. They'll meet you there. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the people who did not have visa, now they were looking for me. And when I got to Washington, it was interesting. They, I don't know whether they wrote my name wrong. I'm a boy guy, talking as a boy. So a white man came and carried my luggage and sent me to the hotel. I said, oh, God is wonderful. You see, it was when I came to Fugasu that I realized that some of the things that we've been going through, we should be excited and thankful 
Because he knows why and how he is preparing us. And that the story that we are going through, the hardship, the difficulties we are all going through, God will make a way and it will be of benefit to our own people and brothers and sisters. So I spent time and I came back. It was not just enough. Then I was given a scholarship to go to the UK, to go and study with two other judges. Meanwhile, I had tried earlier, that was 2003, to go and study in the UK. That was why I refused the, 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 the visa. And do you know what, how it happened? I had prayed for seven days. That God asked for this visa, that going, give it to me. And the seventh day, I said, I wasn't even going to eat. After I got in the visa, then I went like Kamu, then I would eat well. And then they finished, a young lady gave me this, I look at it, denied. <laughs> I look myself, oh God, let me have prayed. Me, I go to church. I've seen this gentleman who was jumping and got in the visa, but you could see that he'd be a very bad boy. <laughs> My brother says that God has a time for everything. If I go to the UK, I wouldn't have gone to the law school that God was asking me to go. See how God has his things. So there are times when God tells you to wait, please, let's have the patience to wait. So I waited. And now, 10 years later, 2013, you see how long? As for me, somebody drew my attention the last time. I didn't even know that I waited 10 years to go to the university. It took me another 10 years to go for further, further, further uh, um, that's both the other course in the UK. That's what I was there. I was it and all. I uh, want you to go and do IT and, and commerce uh, in the UK. So go and see this one, identify and invest in and, and, and go. <laughs> Initially, I was going to do one or two other to see whether I would be able to go to school. And first, of course, I doubted whether I would be able to. But this time around, I had a full scholarship and steadily would pay. So God is a wise man. Wiser than God, but he has his time. Mm. He has his time. time. So I got the scholarship. I went to the UK. I did my postgraduate uh, uh, course uh, at the University of Southampton in the UK. Then I came back. You see how God has been gracious to all of us. When I came to the judicial service as a magistrate, I was one of the few magistrates that has ever been the leader of both the magistrates and the circuit court judges at the time of the magistrates. When I returned from federal studies and I came back as a circuit judge to work for a little while, I became also a high court judge as I am now. The rest is in the hands of God, but he has never finished his business. How did I become the, the, the leader of the high court and then a member of the judicial council. I was my somewhere. So, I want you to represent us as a member of the judicial council. I was hesitant. Before I realized, somebody has even already nominated me as, as, as a nominee. Of course, you have to be elected. When, when my name was mentioned, nobody even contested. And that's how come I became a member of the Judicial Council, that I am still. And when I calculate the period that I've been a member of the Judicial you know the Judicial Council is the highest decision-making body of the Judiciary. So at the time when I was a magistrate, then the secretary judge, I was still a member of the Judicial Council. At the point, I traveled. So when you take that, cumulatively, I've been about nine years as a member of the Judicial Council. Very few people will have that number. It takes the grace of God. It takes the waiting for God. So 
So in a nutshell, I do tell you that whatever we are going through, whatever that has happened to us, God has not abandoned us. And all the things that we learn and that we hear or you meet as brothers and sisters as two gospel, it's also real. But you should know the timing of God. If you miss the timing of God, no matter how you it, you lose it all. Because God, the businessman, has not finished doing his business. What is it that you are going to that God cannot come in? You may be lucky, unlike some of us, you will never even met a Shushan boy in your life. Somebody asked me to, to talk to the, to, the, to, the, to the son. The son had the opportunity, studied in Ghana, he went to the, the US, he, he said he got the masters, he came back and he said he was frustrated. I said, my brother, let's sit down, let's go. <laughs> How about let's go? You are frustrated? Say, yeah, see that brother, I'm frustrated, and I'm going to the years, and then I say, hey! You see how you how you are busy be excited. <laughs> I started sharing my story and experience with you. And you held my hand and said, ah, now I understand. I said, do you know what you are going to be? Of what you become tomorrow, please be strong. Prepare yourself because something is going to happen. If you don't go through all the things that you're going through, it could be familiar, it could be marriage, it could be work, it could be anything. If the things around you do not prepare you, how will you be able to hold it? You think that the switch and boy that I'll be, the watchman that I'll be, it won't, it won't help me. If you bring something more difficult, you think I, 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 I will not remember that, oh, that's a switch and dry, are you? That's a really, uh, say, I'm not dry. So now you tell yourself that, ah, as for this one, uh, this is just small. Because of how God has prepared you, God nurtures us, He doesn't rear us like we rear animals. And in doing so, it's very difficult. People will say all kinds of things. Don't be discouraged by them. You know, my name is Abai Tando. You know that. And you know the meaning of Tando. You all know Tando. River Tando. We spell it Tando, Tando, but it's the same Tando. Because my grandfather is called Esu. Esu Tando. So my Tando is no different from River Tando. In all the difficulties and the challenges I was going through, a pastor came to me. Because he has gone to convince my senior brother to change his name to Tando because there are a lot of cases associated with Tando. Eh? So my brother said, okay, if you are our Lord, then he's going to change his name. He's going to, call, he's going to be called Richard Prosper because when you have sex names, you, if, you, if you are called Richard, the possibility of you becoming Richard is high. And if you have a name like Prosper, then you will indeed Prosper. <laughs> so, in this day, when I call him, you see the US, when I call him, he say, hey, and that uh, Richard Prosper, I said, you know So, I said, I will not change my name. I will not change it. I will maintain my channel. Because it was. Human being, God said man should name. God did not say that any other person. So the power to name is with the man. And that has been done. So be it. And I prayed the prayer of Tabis. So, oh God, extend my territory. I know my name is pain. And I'm going to go through pain. But bless me. Mm. And I said this for myself. That if whatever there is in the tango will not have any pause in me as a, as a child of God. Amen. And God will also what? Bless me. 
in the same vein, you have to tell yourself that God, despite all the things that whether ancestral cases, whatever cases, so many cases, some people be breaking and it is never ending, the breaking and breaking. So how many times are you going to do breaking and breaking? No! Move with the time and the word of God that you have. And that is what will save you. I thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you.